Hey everyone, Houston Math Prep here. This video is going to explain normal vectors and equations of planes and how these two concepts are related. We'll also work some examples of finding normal vectors and equations of planes as well. So let's say we start out with some vector in 3D space with its initial point at the origin. Here I've called my vector w. Now let's give w some components. So let's say vector w is the vector with components a, comma b, comma c. You can see the way we've drawn this, that vector w is orthogonal to some plane here. We know orthogonal is just a vector word for perpendicular. We also have another word that describes a vector that is orthogonal to another object in space when it points straight out of another object at a 90 degree angle. We say that vector is normal to this plane, and when a vector is normal to some other object in space, sometimes we write it in a special way that gives us that information up front. Remember for a unit vector, we used the hat notation to give you the context that a vector was one unit long. For vectors, when we want to specify that something is a normal vector, we'll usually name it with the letter n. So in general, unless we're saying that something is a normal vector, we want to avoid using the letter n for vectors, since someone else might mistake that we're talking about a normal vector when they see n. So we've got our normal vector n here. And if you look in the plane that n is normal to, there are going to be an infinite number of vectors that lie in that plane, right? So there are lots and lots of vectors in this plane orthogonal to the normal vector. Let's just call all of them x, y, z, all of these vectors in this plane. Now something we know from before about any of these vectors in the plane, since they're orthogonal to the normal vector n, any of those vectors in the plane will have a dot product with n that equals zero. If we write out what that dot product calculation looks like, then we get an actual equation for this plane here with normal vector a comma b comma c. And what you might notice is that the components of our normal vector actually appear as the coefficients for our variables in the equation of the plane. So a normal vector for a plane tells us about the slant of a plane in 3D space, not by being in the plane, but by telling us which way is perpendicular to the plane, which direction sticks straight out of the plane. In much the same way that parallel lines in 2D space have the same slope, parallel planes in 3D space will have the same normal vectors. So we know that this equation here is the equation of a plane that goes through the origin that has some normal vector a comma b comma c. So what if we wanted our plane to go through some other point besides the origin? Let's say we want the plane to go through the point 3 comma 2 comma 1. The way we'll show you why we use the equation we're going to use here, we'll think of doing the same plane as before, but just using a translation by these coordinates. So if we want to do a translation of 3 in the x direction, 2 in the y direction, and 1 in the z direction to get to 3, 2, 1, then we could keep the same form from before and just subtract these amounts in our equation. If you think about what would happen if we distributed a, b, and c here, we would still get terms ax, by, and cz, but we'd also have some constant terms on the left side. We could then move all the constant terms we get over here to the right side, and we could combine them all to get something that looks more like this. It's a little simpler. ax plus by plus cz is equal to d. So this will be the equation for a plane with normal vector a comma b comma c that goes through any point x comma y comma z as long as plugging in all of those x comma y comma z values makes this equation true. So if I know a normal vector to the plane and a point in the plane, I can find the equation of the plane. Let's look at a basic example to start with where we already have pretty much everything we need right away. We want to find the equation of the plane with normal vector given to us. So this is our normal vector, we'll call it n here. And it needs to contain the point 3 comma 4 comma 1. So without even using this point yet, looking at the form for our equation of a plane down here in the lower right, remember the normal vector gives us the coefficients a, b, and c for our linear variable terms on the left here. So 2 is my a, negative 1 is my b, 5 is my c. So I know that my equation for plane is going to look like 2x minus y plus 5z 
is equal to some number d. Now we don't know d yet, and once we have d, we actually have the entire equation of the plane already finished. The way we will get d is we have a point that lies in the plane, so when I plug this point into this equation, it should give us a true statement. So I plug in 3, 4, and 1 for x, y, and z, and I just see what makes it true for d. So if I do that, I get 2 times 3 minus 4 for y plus 5 times 1 for z is supposed to equal d. So that will give us 6 minus 4 plus 5 is equal to d, and once we do the math here, this actually gives us 7 is equal to d. And that's the only thing extra we needed once we had put our normal vector in for the coefficients for our plane. So our equation for this plane is 2x minus y plus 5z is equal to 7. And any point in this plane will satisfy this, will make this statement true. And you can see still that this plane has a normal vector of 2, negative 1, and 5. So let's use this and go back and take a look at something we've already talked about in our Calculus 3 series here, and that's the idea of the equations for the coordinate planes. So the first one we talked about, the xy coordinate plane, we told you earlier in this series that z equals 0 was the equation for the coordinate plane. So think about this xy plane has a normal vector maybe that's sticking straight up, right, in the z direction. And a vector that sticks straight up in the z direction, for example, k hat does that. That's the vector 0, 0, 1. So this vector 0, 0, 1 is normal to the xy plane. So these are the coefficients for x, y, and z. In other words, we know that the xy coordinate plane should satisfy 0x plus 0y plus 1z is equal to d. So obviously this is just going to simplify to z equals d. And of course, we know this plane, xy plane, goes through the origin, right? So when we plug in 0, 0, 0, this needs to be true. And that's why we end up with z equals 0 as the equation for this plane. Looking also at the yz coordinate plane, so looking straight on here at this vertical plane containing the y and z axes, i hat, which sticks straight forward one unit on the x axis, that is normal to the yz plane i hat, also known as 1, 0, 0, if we used that as our normal vector and our coefficients for the plane, that would be 1x plus 0y plus 0z is equal to d. And you can see here again, this just simplifies to x equals d. And of course, because it goes through 0, 0, 0, plugging that information here is just going to give you x equals 0. We can do a similar thing with the xz coordinate plane. We have j hat sticking straight out of the xz plane here as we look along that. So since it's 0, 1, 0, this 1 would go in for the coefficient of y, and we would get y equals 0. Let's look at a couple other examples. Here we want to find the equation of the plane through the origin containing vectors 3, 1, negative 2, and 1, 4, 1. So you'll notice it contains the origin, so we have a point here of 0, 0, 0. What we don't have is we don't have a normal vector. We don't know what n is just yet. We have two vectors that are in the plane, but remember n sticks straight out of the plane. So what we really need to do to find a normal vector when we have two other vectors is we need to do the cross product of these. So if I think of this one as v and this vector as w, what we really need to do to find our normal vector would be to do something like take v cross w. So let's go ahead and do that here. If you need some review on the cross product, you can check out our video on the cross product. So in our first row, we'll have i hat, j hat, and k hat. We'll do our determinant here. We'll put v in the second row, so 3, 1, negative 2, and 1, 4, 1, w in the last row. Expanding this first row here, so we'll write down i hat first, cross out the row and column i hat is in. We have a minor matrix of 1, negative 2, 4, 1 here. And then it's always minus j hat, don't forget that. So j hat, if we cross out that row and column with j hat in it, 3, negative 2, 1, 1. 3, negative 2, 1, 1. And then plus k hat. And k hat will be multiplied by crossing out the row and column k hat is in. We have a 2 by 2, 3, 1, 1, 4 here. We'll write that down, 3, 1, 1, 4. 
go ahead and say what this is. So we have i hat times, this would be 1 minus negative 8, so plus 8, minus j hat times 3 times 1 is 3, minus 1 times negative 2, minus negative 2 would be plus 2 there, plus k hat. And here we get 3 times 4 is 12, minus 1 times 1 is 1. So we get our normal vector, which is v cross w, is 9i hat minus 5j hat plus 11k hat. That's our normal vector. And now that we have a vector normal to the plane, we can write our plane equation. So that would be 9x minus 5y plus 11z is equal to some d. And we, we could plug stuff in, but let's think about it, right? If it's through the origin, what am I plugging in for all of my x, y, z values? I'm plugging in 0 all over there, right? So every one of these terms is just going to be 0. That means that d has to be 0, right? And so if you remember we said before at the very beginning of this, if we have ax plus by plus cz is equal to 0, that tells you that your plane goes through the origin there. Let's look at one more that just gives us a little extra step here. So we want to find the equation of the plane containing the points p, q, and r. We're given p is 2, negative 1, negative 2, q is 0, 2, 1, and r is 1, 3, 3. So we have lots of points to choose from. That's really great. Plenty of points. What we don't have is a single vector. We don't have a normal vector. We don't even have two vectors like we did in the last example where we could find the cross product of those two vectors. What we do have with these three points, though, is we could find two vectors using these points, and then we could do the cross product. So it's just a little bit extra. Let's go ahead and figure out maybe vector PQ here, and we'll figure out also vector PR. And then we'll have some vectors, and we can do kind of what we did last time. So if we do vector PQ, that tells us to do Q minus P to get our vector here. So 0 minus 2 is negative 2. 2 minus negative 1 would be a positive 3. And then 1 minus negative 2 would also be a positive 3. So we get negative 2, 3, 3 for our vector PQ. Vector PR, so this will be R minus P to get this vector. So we'll have 1 minus 2 would be negative 1. 3 minus negative 1 would be 4. And then 3 minus negative 2 would be 5. We have two vectors now, so we can get a normal vector. These are in the plane. Remember, our normal vector will then equal PQ cross PR. So we'll be doing a cross product here as well. So our normal vector is going to equal the determinant of, we'll have i hat, j hat, k hat again for our first row. We'll take PQ and put it in the next row, negative 2, 3, 3. And we'll put in our PR for the last row, negative 1, 4, 5. Let's go ahead and do that. So I hat times this 3, 3, 4, 5 determinant that is left over here. Remember, our next term is always minus J hat. So minus J hat here, crossing out that row and column, negative 2, 3, negative 1, 5. And plus k hat, our last determinant here. So crossing out that row and column, negative 2, 3, negative 1, 4. All right, and we'll go ahead and compute this. So i hat times, we get 15 there, minus the other diagonal is 12 when we multiply minus j hat, here we get negative 10, minus negative 3 would be like plus 3, plus k hat, times this diagonal negative 8, minus negative 3, which would be like plus 3. So here we get a normal vector of 3 i hat, plus 7 j hat, minus 5 k hat. Okay, we've got our normal vector. Let's go ahead and give ourselves a little bit of room to finish up here. So if this is our normal vector, then we already know that our plane is going to be 3x plus 7y 
minus 5z is equal to some number d. And remember, all of these points are in the plane, right? All of them. So we can just pick one of them, pick whichever one you like, and we'll get d that we need. Um, you could pick whichever one has the smallest numbers. This one has a zero in it. Maybe I'll pick q. I'm going to go ahead and choose this one. You could choose a different one. So 3 times 0 plus 7 times 2 minus 5 times 1 is equal to d. So here we get 0. This is 14 minus 5. 14 minus 5 would give us 9 for d. So d equals 9. And then we simply plug that information in to what we had before. 3x plus 7y minus 5z is equal to 9. And that is our equation for the plane that contains p, q, and r with n sticking straight out of the plane. Okay, everyone, good luck with your normal vectors and equations of planes. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next video.